Well, everyone, welcome back. It is Prietoology Season 4. Wow, already four seasons. Today, we start Season 4 of Prietoology. Talking about this season, we will be talking about geology and earth science, too mixed into one talking about things like today we're going to talk about the basics of geology we're going to talk about geography biomes weather and a bunch of other stuff that'll be pretty interesting so if you haven't seen Prietoology before i recommend stopping this video go watch season one two three and one two and three in the in the playlist right here go catch up on some chemistry physics and biology that we've done before Still, sadly, we will not be doing Experiment of the Day. I don't know if we'll be doing Experiment of the Day next season. Sneak peek, we're doing another season. So yeah, I don't know if we'll be doing Experiment of the Day next season. So yeah, um, might as well talk about the table. Yeah, you see it's a bit different. There's no more plants. Well, I'll just explain some of the stuff on the table. So here we have the textbook that we're using. Basher Science is what we usually use. Our old faithful big book of science experiments. A Statue of Liberty, because why not? I just liked it. Yeah, it's a really cool Lego. And a plasma globe. You might have seen it in the first episode ever of Prietology when we talk about noble gases. There are some noble gases in here. And introducing a new thing, an item of the day will be used for Prietology. Today's item of the day, an earth. We're going to be talking about the earth and its structure today for, for the season premiere of Prietology. A new series, video series, will be, taught, will be starting soon, but that's for announcements at the end. So yeah, like we usually do, we go over the key terms. Alright, so usually at the beginning of the episode, and today's is the first episode, the basics of geology, usually at the beginning before we start getting into the terms, we review the key terms. A new thing that I'm implementing this season, for every episode, there will not be more than 10 terms because I remember doing season three, episode two, holy mackerel, that took way too long, 20 terms in that one. Well, we have eight terms only today, so that'll be better. We have crust, mantle, core, plates, hotspot, earthquake, rocks, and minerals. Let's get started in our brand new season. All right, here we are, our first term of pre-etymology. And also one more thing I should mention, we will still be doing fun facts at the end of the term, like we did last season. Crust! Where we are right now, you are sitting on the crust right now. It is the top of Earth's layers. It contains all life. If you want to know more about life, check out Season 3 of Prietoology. It is made of solid rock that contains continents, seabeds, islands, plateaus, mountain ranges, water. We'll talk about a lot of that more in a later episode. It also has mountain ranges that point out of the crust and anti-ranges that point into the mantle, which is a layer below it, like folding paper, like, hold on really quick. Here, I have a piece of paper, and if I fold it correctly, here we are. These are like the mountain ranges, so as you can see, it's in the M shape. So basically, the mountains, if you look closely, the mountains are the ones that are pointing up top. The anti-ranges, the mountain ranges are here, the anti-ranges point in the mantle. So if my finger hears the mantle, this is usually how mountain ranges work. It's just contracted plates that are together. So usually the rocks that make up the crust are things like basalt, granite, and sedimentary rocks, which we will get to in a bit. Fun fact, our first fun fact of the year. The one, it, the crust makes up only 1% of the Earth's volume. All the, all the crust is only 1% of this thing. Pretty cool, yeah. We only live in a small part of this big world. All right, our second term of A, we're already making good progress, the mantle. So basically how we're gonna go, we're gonna go from the earth layers down. The mantle is usually considered to be divided into an upper and lower mantle, us living closer to the upper. It's the largest liquid area and it moves a lot. So it's like, a, it's a churning sea underneath the crust and it moves the plates, the crust plates, a lot. We'll talk about plates in a bit. More solid rock is at the top of the crust and it's more liquid near the core. So the upper mantle is usually more solid, more like a, like a Play-Doh almost. It's kind of like a Play-Doh at the top that's very mushy and grainy and rocky. It's still mushy and hot. The liquid is like a smoothie. So just imagine a Play-Doh on top of a smoothie. 
That's a horrible analogy. So yeah, basically how, that's, how, that's how it's like. It's Play-Doh-ish at the top and more smoothie-ish at the bottom. The movement of the mantle can cause earthquakes and volcanoes, which we will also talk about in a bit. Volcanoes are considered a type of hot spot, which is also something we'll talk about later. Fun fact about the Accra, the mantle, the thickness of the mantle is 1,800 miles. So that's like... 1,800 miles, that's about, so if the crust is 1% of the mantle, then that means... Ah, I can't do math right now. Um, so yeah, 1,800 miles. That is a lot of thickness, a lot of Play-Doh and smoothie. Uh, I need to change that analogy later. Alright, our core is literally the core of the Earth. It's the absolute center of the Earth, as far as you can go. It's divided also, like the mantle, into an outer and inner core. The inner core being completely surrounded by an outer core. So, like, if I put my fist like this, my other hand is the outer and the middle hand's inner. I need to make better analogies. It's divided, so the liquid core is outer, and the solid core is the inner core. So, it's like a... I'm gonna stop making analogies, you guys can get it. The rotating currents, well the rotating core, can create, is the thing that creates the magnetic field of the earth. The rotating currents create the magnetic field in the earth, the magnetic field is direct current if I remember? Yeah. Magnetic field of the earth protects us from radiation, cosmos, cosmic radiation and stuff like that. The core is mostly composed of iron and nickel, which allows for it to be magnetic. You know, iron's magnetic, so a rotating magnet around a metallic, around a metallic outer core makes a magnetic field. It also has nickel, which is also magnetic, but not as magnetic as iron. The fun fact about it, the diameter, since it's a sphere, 2,166 miles. That's a good amount. All right, we're halfway there. Plates, not as in dinner plates, but tectonic plates, the ones that move about the mantle. Pieces of crust that float along the mantle. So basically, like, there's an experiment that some people do. They have milk, I think it's milk, and they put something on top, or water, and then they put like slabs of wood on top of it and see how they collide and stuff like that. So basically they just float around in the crust, just colliding slightly, and you know how the mantle rotates, that's how the crust can move. The colder, denser plates during earthquakes sink into the mantle, and the colder, denser plates are usually at the bottom of the ocean, which are oceanic plates, versus continental crust, which is on the land. So you right now, if you're not at the bottom of the ocean, you are on continental crust right now. Collisions between plates, because plates don't just go smoothly like F1, like, and remember how in Formula 1 when I played, there's collisions all the time. Beat him down the street! Let's beat him down the street! Come on! Don't push me off! No! Ah! There's four cars on me! Plates are exactly like that, except they're not cars. But there are collisions between them all the time, and those is what we call earthquakes. Those release massive amounts of energy that you feel as a shape. Fun fact, the smallest plate, and yes, there are names for these plates, there are 12? Hold on. Alexa. How many tectonic plates are there? There are currently 14 major, or major, plates and 43 minor, or secondary. So she said 14 minor, 14 major and 30 minor, so 17. 17 plates, and the smallest out of them is the Juan de Fuca plate, which I don't know where that is. I'm going to guess some place in Central South America. Yeah, alright, let's get into the second half of the season, into not the season, but of the episode. Alright, term number five of eight. Let's try saying this fast ten times. Hot spot, 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 hot spot. I can't say it fast. Hot spots! Hot spots and hot spots. Hot spots galore throughout the earth. There are places in the crust where the mantle is unusually hot. Pieces of mantle like little holes in the crust where the mantle can come up and heat the surface. And usually, like, remember what we said, the top of the mantle is like Play-Doh, the bottom is a smoothie, so that smoothie somehow is able to get through the Play-Doh layer and into the crust. They can make geysers, which are erupting water hot springs, just boiling hot water they should never touch. And the most of all, volcanoes. That's where the biggest ones are, all of them hot elements from the earth coming up and spewing for pressure and heat from the mag from the mantle 
which like I said is unusually hot where it is. That's a great hot spot. Magma can arise from the mantle in the form of volcanoes and the magma flows out of a volcano in the form of lava. So when magma is inside the earth, it's called, when magma is in, when magma is inside the earth, it's called magma. And when it's outside being spewed out onto the crust, that is lava. Usually volcanoes are up because of pressure and heat. A lot of other factors. If you watch physics in the pre-etiology season two, you'll understand everything about physics. Well, not everything, but a good amount. Still a bit unknown about how they form, really. Scientists are still figuring out the theory of tectonic plates. Still a lot of mysteries to be found. Yeah, that's really a lot of mysteries that still yet to be solved in the scientific world. Fun fact, the number of known global hotspots, so hotspots all over the world, like major ones, 50. Only 50, Yellowstone being one of them, volcanoes. Really, those are a lot of main ones, and usually the volcanoes are located around an area in the Pacific called the Ring of Fire, which is also a place where a lot of earthquakes uh, occur. All right. All right, a massive shake of the Earth. In earthquakes, which are term number six, lots of shaking in the Earth, a collision of... Uh, give me some things to collide. A collision. Did you see a collision like this? A collision, a collision of two plates at an area called a fault line. There are fault lines that are basically the borders between the crust. So basically, let's say you have... Hmm, let me give a good analogy. I think this analogy could actually work. Hold on. Let's say this is our Earth. These, so let's draw the continents really quick. I'm gonna draw them on my side and I'll switch them for you guys. All right, I've drawn our Earth. It's upside down for you guys at the moment. Um, there you go. That's a really rough interpretation of the Earth. But the fault lines, let me draw it with a different thing. These would be our fault lines, cracks in the earth. I don't know the specific plates, but literally cracks between the plates. So like, imagine just like getting a, a pane of glass, like a sheet of glass, and just smashing it. Creates cracks everywhere. These, I don't know the exact like location of the plates. These are our plates along the entire surface of the earth like that so basically that's really how the earth is organized but not an exact interpretation but that's really kind of how it's organized into different plates all right let's get back to the board so if we look at our map again we'll see that the like i said the earth is divided into different fault lines that separate the plates and those are the plates that float along the along the along the mantle so there's a difference in plates. So there's two types of plates, really. There's oceanic and continental. The denser, like I said, with plates, the denser oceanic plates will go under the continental crust into the mantle, just sink in there. When the collision between plates... Oh, I need something else now for uh, analogy. Um, hold on. I have two playing cards. So say this is our place. They're coming towards each other and you see it's a bit hard to tell But I'll go like this so you can see it when plates collide like this They want the say so this is our continental. This is our oceanic The continental will be going under the oceanic will be going under and the continental will just slide on top of it like that two continental oh no. two continental crusts that collide can sit make something that we see everywhere mountain ranges or mountains so they would go like this and they would bend it's a bit hard to do with playing cards they go like this and they would bend upward like that protruding into the sky with the anti ranges that we saw in our in our folded paper example that the anti ranges go into the mantle yeah so basically oceanic versus continental the continental the oceanic will sink. Continental versus continental, they will rise. Oceanic versus oceanic, I think those will make the undersea mountain ranges, I think. So yeah, that's really it. Um, the friction and energy is what you feel when there's an earthquake. So the friction and energy of two plates sliding against each other, creating immense pressure and energy and friction all being released in the form of an earthquake. That's a lot of energy. And under earthquakes in the ocean, so let's say we have 
Kong's oceanic versus oceanic crust. Those are what we know as tsunamis, which are giant ocean waves that can go into the land and make chaos. Fun fact, the most earthquake common country, Japan, like I said, they sit in a region of the earth called the Ring of Fire, which is a place where a lot of volcanoes and earthquake and a lot of the fault lines are located there. Um, all right, we got two more terms to go, and these are some good ones. All right, we've been doing all this talk about crust and mantle and plates, but we've never talked about what they're really made of. Rocks! Rocks are everywhere! They are the things that make up the crust. Considering that we live on the crust, there would be an abundance of rocks everywhere. There are three types. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Those are the three main types of rocks that you will... Actually, the three rocks, types of rocks that you will find everywhere. Igneous rocks are cooled magma. Remember, we will learn what magma is. It's lava that is spewed out from... Well, it's cooled lava, which is magma spewed out from volcanoes on, onto, the, onto the crust. And those are usually come in the form of basalt and granite. I don't know if I showed you this, but I have this little mining, minor little thing. They have different rocks and minerals on them. I don't know which one's which, but usually these ones are igneous or sedimentary or metamorphic. Sedimentary rocks are ones that have been layers that, that are made of layers of sediment. So like sands or dusts or something, or like little tiny crushed up rocks. They are pressurized, pressurized over a lot of time into made into a new rock, so basically just shoved together and forced to exist with each other. These usually come in the form of limestone and shale, which are two common sedimentary rocks you would find. And the final is metamorphic, which is a little, little different, a little more harder to understand. It's when igneous or sedimentary rocks are heated like igneous or sedimentary rocks and pressurized, or so they can be heated or pressurized to create a new rock. So basically, when a, if you heat up a sedimentary rock, you can become a metamorphic. If you pressurize an igneous, you can become a metamorphic. If you heat up an igneous, it becomes a metamorphic. If you pressurize a sedimentary, you can become a metamorphic. For a lot of other different things, it creates a new rock, and these usually come in the form of slates and marbles. So that heat and pressure is what really is the creator of all rocks and the variation in the type. Fun fact, there's a rock called Feld... Let me see if I can say this right. Feldspar, F-E-L-D-S-P-A-R, now you can see it better, makes up 60% of the crust. A lot of the other ones is just other things that are found in the crust, like, like I said, basalt, granite, limestone, shale, rocks, slate and marble. All right, we got one final term to end season one, to end the first episode. All right, here we are, the final term of season four, episode one, the basics of geology. If rocks didn't interest you enough, minerals will. They're the beauties of the earth. They can be extracted from rocks or something. They just live in solitude, like they are not present in rocks. But usually, have you ever seen it, like here we go, um, here, here's an image. This is an example of a geode, which is some minerals found inside rocks. So that's how some minerals can be present inside rocks. Valuable metals can be extracted from mineral ores to make things like, you know, like gold, silver, lead, um, iron, a bunch of other valuable metals that are super valuable in today's society. Minerals can also be in the form of crystals, which is usually how you see them. So if you put the geode picture back up, you'll see that's some crystal in there. And if we go back to my Meyer statue, you'll see there's actually some crystal in here. We have some purple crystal. I don't know what it is, but it's kind of falling apart at the moment. But yeah, this it would be an example of a mineral. These are an example of a rock. As you can see, different appearances. Minerals are more have more of a lust, have more of a shine. They can be in the form of crystals like you know, you know some of these crystals, you know diamond, you know quartz, you know emerald, you know gypsum. There's a lot of other really cool ones out there. I don't know what that one is. I'll look that one up. Jade. That's another cool one. Those are usually very valuable and usually come with conspicuous consumption and stuff like that. Fun fact! The world's largest crystal, the biggest one, is 55 tons of gypsum. That's a lot. A gypsum crystal, that is 55 tons. Wow. I'm not going to do the clapping thing anymore because we're, we're getting a hang of pre-etymology. We're already four seasons in. 
All right, we are done with the episode. So usually at the end of an episode, we do announcements. So let's just get on to announcements. We got some pretty important ones. Look at this. Whenever I bring my hand close to it, there's a lot more spikes and stuff like that. All right, announcements. Um, season four, off to a bang. Geology is a great topic to discuss. Season one, see episode one, check. Some announcements. Gaming videos, you might not see them for a while. I've been doing a lot of gaming recently. It's a really tiring video to make, so you might see a, give, a gap in gaming videos. Coming soon, 2021, summer, 2022, summer vacation, that we are going on vacation again, and it is coming very soon. More details about that. I might start gaming videos after we come in from vacation, but... That is still to be determined. We will figure that out. A brand new video series. It's not gaming. It's like you and me having a conversation. I call it F1 Review. I will be doing my own personal view and commentary of some Formula One races. I'm going to start with the first five that have already happened this season, which happened to be... Which, the first five races that will be happening this season, which is the Bahrain Grand Prix, Saudi Arabia, Australia, Emilia Romagna, and Miami. I'll be doing my personal thing. So if you're a Formula One fan, join in. It'll be pretty fun. First episode is expected to be May 14th. All right, I think that's it. The next episode will be about... Geography. We're getting into some of the physical Earth science. So now that we talked about what's making up the Earth, let's talk about what's around the Earth. How is humans, like you and me, distinguish the different land features? So latitude, longitude, tropics, landforms, plateaus, continents, and much more. Stay tuned for that. That will be in about. That will be next month, I think. So yeah, that's really it. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you for the next episode of Creatology and coming soon on May 14th, the first video of Formula One Review. See ya. Oh, I should, oh, I forgot to say remote. Whoops, I should have.